Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's slow stitching video, I'm going to show the process of making interesting faces. I'll show you how I make an interesting face based on the character Zorro. And there's a trivia question in that as well. Does anyone know his original name? The character, his alter ego, kind of the Bruce Wayne to his Batman? I'll unveil it in the middle of the video too. But for the video, I show how I make the face. Now I'm going to show you how I make it with the intention of creating it into a book of faces. So today is just the first video in that series, but it's all about making the face. So I make the face, I add a few elements that really make it recognizable so that you know it's inspired by something in particular, and then we stitch it together. I always add one or two little elements that are personal to that personality. So in the case of Zorro, I add his hat, his little gaucho hat, and a mustache. There are other things you can add based on the character, and I'll show you some examples of that as well. And then lastly, I add a name tag, because for every character, there's a backstory, and the name is where it starts. I use fabric scraps, lots of stitches, and plenty of imagination to get this started. So let me show you how I do that. I wanted to start by giving you an idea of some of the interesting faces that I made just with fabric and some stitching. So I took different bits of fabric and I created the face. Now this one is using a pattern fabric and then I just stitched all the features, the eyes, somewhat of a nose, the mouth, and the hair. And basically I chose one feature and made it really stand out. In this case it was the hair because it's such, you know, it's a bright color, it's got interesting texture, and the face is secondary. The other thing I do is I like to add some little embellishments somewhere along the way. I don't always do this, but like here I have a heart button. Here I have just these cute little colorful stitches on the background. Here I have a little touch of lace. And for the pirate, I just did the pirate. I thought didn't really need very much after that. But so each of these little pieces are standalone. The other thing that I like to add is just a name tag. I just think that's a cute little touch. And again, all these touches are optional, as well as you can add your own versions and totally change it how I did it. Now each of these are standalone and they're very unique. The name kind of corresponds to the piece, Rosie. Here I have this little piece that I did, but I found this little swatch of fabric that was already printed with a face. And I'll show you that in a moment. Here I took this lady hair with a pink face and the blue hair and I just thought she looked like a very strict teacher so I gave her name Miss Cobalt and then here I did a pirate and I named him Jack I think you know the reference there but it was just kind of interesting he has a little eye patch a gold earring something of facial hair a little hat with crossbones and you know just a little scarf underneath so it's indicative none of these are perfect they all have imperfections but they're all really intriguing now I also created a book and I'll show you that at the end a fabric book made of friendly faces they all have the same elements the name tags and then they have an additional page but I'll show you that later let's get started right with creating these interesting faces so one way to start is if you happen to have fabric or you see it along your journeys with a face printed on it, it could even be a label, um, you can use that face just like I did here where I added embellishments to give it a somewhat of a body, a little hat, just a little personality. So this one is just my favorite all-time cute fabric with all these different faces, very simple moon faces. Then I found this fabric, which I haven't used very much, but it's got all these different little animal faces. So each one of these would make a nice little um, swatch for my friendly faces as well. So that's an option you have if you don't want to stitch your faces, if you want to just start with something somewhat ready-made and just add a body and different elements that way. But the way I started with these faces and the faces in my book is I just went through my fabric stash and I started building up the faces. So I started with the actual face and then built up little different elements to the face, the hair, the eyes, somewhat of a body, maybe some shoulders. So the way I do that is I just search for a fabric or I start with an idea for a theme. So in today's video, I'm going to create a face that is inspired by the character Zorro. He was a masked man. He had a mask, a dark hat, a cape, I don't, and maybe some facial hair. I don't know how far I'll take it, but I went through my stash and found some fabric that inspired me. If I didn't want to use the standard fabric, I could just take some pattern fabric. My only qualification is whatever 
fabric I use, the color and the print, I want to make sure that my stitches show up. So if I use a dark fabric, I'll use light colored stitches. And if I use a very detailed fabric, I'll use a very heavy dark stitch. But I'm not going to use this fabric today. I'll use this for another face. Today I'm working on my Zorro character. So I chose some fabric, some neutral fabric for his face. And then I went through and looked for dark fabric to add the elements of his hat and his mask and maybe a cape or some kind of body part. And then I realized that this was kind of very um, subtle, but I like a pop of color. So I decided red would look great against the black. And so I have my red fabric, that will be my accent. And then I found this beautiful fabric just next to it, which picks up on the red and adds even more color. So I think I'll use that as well. Now let me show you how I get started. So the first thing I do is decide what I'm gonna do with this image. If I just wanna make a little square image, like we have here, I can use any type of fabric, but I think I'm gonna create this into a book and I'll show you a video of that later. So to do that, I start with my base. My base page is just something substantial. I'm using a little quilted piece of fabric here. You could use a piece of denim, you could use a piece of felt, you can use anything you want, even just a standard piece of fabric. But you decide on the size. Now for the book, each of my pages are gonna be four by six. So I cut this template out of just a piece of old cardboard. So I'll just put my template down, trace around, and that's gonna be the page. So that's my basis. I'll cut that out. And I have my page. So for each face that I make, I'm going to dedicate its own page. I'm not going to worry about the back because I'll cover that up. And I'll show you that process in the video on making the book. Today we're just going to focus on making the face. The other thing I like to do when I'm using this, because I know it's for a book, is I just like to make a quick guide here, one inch down here, and this is for the spine of the book, and this is not going to show. So I just create that quick line so I know that my focus is on this part of the panel. Again, if you're using just a scrap of fabric, you don't need to do this. And now that I have my fabric, my size for my face is dictated by this. I can create a book this way, but I'm going to create just this landscape orientation. Because I have my 4 by 6 size, my face is going to fit in here. And because this is a slow stitch piece, I want to add interest to the background. And the interest is, is going to be kind of abstract and very random. And that's why I have these interesting fabrics here. But the first thing I like to do is start out with the face, since that's my focal point. So I'm going to use this neutral colored fabric for the face. It's kind of flesh tone, but it's more neutral enough that the dark black here will really stand out to show the hat as well as the mask. So I just create a shape for the face. Now it can be an oval or a round. It doesn't even have to be perfect and that's what makes it really interesting. So I'm just gonna sketch out a circle here for my Zorro face. And I know the hat is important. So I just kind of eyeball it to see if it's gonna fit. And then I always like to put a neck on my faces. It just kind of grounds it and I can always cut that off or cover it later. So I'll cut out my face shape and if anything, I like to make my face a little larger than expected because I can always trim it down. So I cut out half of my face and then I just like to fold it in half just to make it symmetrical. If you don't want it symmetrical, just skip this step. So I have a face here and I can decide if I want the neck to hang off and I can always trim that later. My next thing is I want to make that hat. So it's just a simple hat and I have a couple of dark fabrics here. So I think I'm going to take this fabric here that's printed. It, it fits nicely. It's a short hat. I'll turn it on the opposite side and then I'll use that head as a guide. 
and this is just my design process. The hat's going to sit on the top of the head. So this is going to be where the brim is. And then it's just a short little hat. At least that's what my memory tells me. So once again, I'll cut that out. And so I have my hat. And now I'm going to need to make the mask and the facial features. So this is where I'll take my marker and just kind of sketch in where I'd put the eyes normally. And because it's a mask, it's going to really just kind of go around the eyes. And then there'll be eye holes for it. So just like that. Now I'll have a little nose coming out here, a mouth, and maybe I'll just do a mustache. So just, and maybe just a little uh, goatee here. So I've got a Zorro-like character. If I want, I can add some hair, and I can either add that with stitches, or I can add that with my fabric. I think I'll do that. So I'll play around creating the fabric pieces from the mask as well as the hair. I'll speed it up so you can see the process, and then we'll come back and start on the next stage. So I cut out the hair and then I realized that it doesn't really shape the face quite well. So I'll just trim down the face and I play around and move it until I find the right position. With the mask I realized I really needed to cut the eye holes. At first I thought I could just stitch eyes over it, but I think it's really important to see just a little bit of skin beneath that mask. Again, that's totally up to you how detailed you want to make this. So now I have my main features cut out of fabric and they're set up. But because this is a slow stitching project, I want to add some elements of interest to it. So I'm going to take my fabric here that isn't part of the face, it isn't relevant to the face, and just add some strips or some pieces to the background. I'll enhance it with stitches as well, and I won't make it distracting to the face, but I just want to add a little bit of like fabric collage. So I'm going to take some of this fabric, it kind of matches the skin tone or coordinates a little, and I'll stitch that down. And I think I'll add just a little strip of red maybe the length of the page here. And so I'll cut that out as well. And again, I play around to see what I really like. There's no wrong thing and everything you add will add interest. If you put it down and you decide it doesn't work for you, then just remove it. And you can audition it before you stitch it. So there, I'm happy with the way that looks. I think maybe I'll add a little strip of this colored fabric just to tie it in. And it doesn't even have to be that large. Maybe just like that. So now I'm going to pin everything down and then we'll come back and start our stitching. So I have my pieces stitched down. These simple pieces I just left because I don't want the additional pins to stick me. So I'm going to take my black thread here. This is just a black pearl thread. I have the knot on the end and I'm going to start by sewing down that mask first. It will anchor all these pieces together. So I'll start right here in the center, right where my pin is, towards the outline. And I'm just going to make small little stitches 
just to hold it down. It's going to be just like a little straight stitch every so often. And again, I'm just doing a tiny one because my goal is to tack down that mask as well as tacking down the fabric for the face as well as the hair that's behind it. So because it's three layers plus the padding and this red layer, it does offer me a little resistance, but that's okay. It's actually very nice to sew. It's very substantial and sturdy. So once I have that mask down, I can remove that pin and just go all the way around the perimeter. Again, these stitches aren't so much decorative as they are functional. So they're holding my element here in place. And it's really up to you. You don't have to start from the center of the face. In most cases, I like to do that because it helps me so I can grow from the center outward. And then once I come to this side, I'll just finish all the way around this side. Again, I keep my stitches small and right on the edge. After I finish stitching the edge, then I'll stitch just around the eye hole of each of these masks. Now this mask seemed to go off the face just a little bit, and that's okay. I like the way that looks. It kind of blends into the hairline. But again, if that doesn't work for you, you can trim that down. I think the mask adds interest because as humans, we're drawn to others' eyes, and the mask is a little unexpected. I don't know how much this is gonna look like Zorro, but the idea is there. It might just look like a bandit. So now that I've finished sewing the perimeter of the mask, I'm just gonna go in and sew right around the inside by those eye holes. And again, I wanna keep just small stitches and just to really emphasize not only that shape, but to keep that fabric from fraying. I don't need too many stitches, just enough to hold it down. But I really wanna emphasize that shape, so I'll go around that perimeter and make those stitches parallel to that eye hole. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once I have that done, I'll come over here to that second eye hole. And stitch all the way around. So now from here, I like to start stitching the hair and the hat. I have the black thread, which is perfect for the hair, so I'll just come over here to the edge, just to the bottom here, and stitch around the perimeter. And I can make my stitches just a little bit bigger than the mask, because that area is just a little bit bigger. And again, I want to continue right around that perimeter. I don't want to go too close to the edge, because I don't want that fabric to fray. If the fraying fabric is really a problem for you, you can turn it the edge under, which requires a lot more work, or you can use a fusible stabilizer where you iron it on underneath the fabric before you stitch, and that prevents a lot of the fraying. So I have half of my hair sewn on. Now I'm just gonna go up here and start stitching around the perimeter of the hat, and I'm going outside away from the center of the face. This is basically dictated by how much thread I have left on my needle. But you can do whatever you want. You can change the color, and that's the beauty and the uniqueness of this project. So I'll continue sewing around the perimeter of the hat and the remainder of the hair, and we'll come back and start sewing down the face. So the hat and the hair and the mask are stitched down and Zorro's starting to come together. I'm just gonna take my flush color here that sort of matches that face and I'm gonna stitch around the perimeter there. This time I'm gonna start right at the neck. And again, I just do a straight stitch. 
This emphasizes the shape as well as tacking down that fabric. And so I'll just continue going all the way around here. So each of these stitches adds a little bit of texture. And depending on the size of the stitch and where it is actually placed, it draws the eye, even if it's very subtle. So that's why sometimes I'll redo a stitch because I want to make sure it goes in the right direction and doesn't confuse the eye. Now because I don't want the face and the chin to be one piece, I'm going to come back up here and stitch all the way around the face, the round part of the face. I'm going to leave a little space for where that facial hair is going to go, but I'm just creating those little stitched lines. And now, because I have an abundance of thread, I'm just going to go up here and very carefully create that little nose. So I'm going to stitch very close together stitches. I'll start with one stitch, and then I'll just add a little back stitch. And this creates almost a line of stitches. Because they're so close together. And again, the nose is what really gives this face a lot of character. If I make a really big nose, it'll look differently than if I make a small tapered nose. I like the bigger noses. I think they add a lot of interest to the piece. Creating just a little shape where the nostrils would be, but not really emphasizing them too much. But I'm just creating a little bit of shape so it doesn't look straight across. And that's very simple. Because of the facial hair that we're going to add, I didn't want the nose to really fight with it. So I'll knot off this thread, stitch down the red here just so I can get rid of these pins so I'm not hurting my fingers anymore, and then we'll start with the facial hair. So now I've tacked down the red part. I didn't worry about this because it's going to be covered up when I bind my book, but for this part I did tack it around the edge just to keep it neat. Now for the facial hair. I'm going to start right here and I'm going to jump in with that mustache. So I already sketched a little design, but I'm going to go over it again, just so I have that mustache. And so now I'm going to start right on the edge, from the far edge, and I'm just going to create a split stitch. So I'm going to go down, create my first stitch, the distance, hold my loop of thread to the side, and then pull up that stitch in between. And now my thread comes out halfway through that stitch. So I'm going to come down again, following that line that I sketched for that mustache, make that loop, and come up halfway in between again with that needle, keeping it right on that line that I sketched. And this creates a beautiful curved line, which is perfect for a little curved mustache. Now this is making a very thin mustache. You can thicken it up if you'd like by going over it again with more stitches or by using thicker thread, like maybe embroidery floss. I'm just using this pearl, but I kind of like that thin look. One thing to keep in mind is when you're doing this stitch, keep all your loops going the same direction, meaning fold them down. Don't alternate by keeping them up. Always fold them down. Or if you start by folding them up, always fold them up. So once I get to the center here, I'm just going to close my stitch, and then I'm going to start again on the other side, and this time I'm going to go out. So I just start here, make my first stitch, have my loop, fold it down, come up in between that stitch, and just continue. Again, I fold it down, bring my needle up in between that stitch, and again, follow that curve of that line that we sketched out. I'm almost at the end. Just have a few more stitches, one more curve to go.
and I'll add one more stitch after this. So my mustache is fairly symmetrical and it looks good. There's a little bit of marker remaining at the end. I'll take a hot iron and that will remove this Frixian marker. Now I want to go into the eyes. So I'm going to come over right here and I make a simple eye. I'm just going to come up here in the middle of the eye, maybe a little bit to the lower center of the eye. And I'm going to make a French knot. So I take my thread, I pulled it up through my fabric. I take my thread and I wrap it around my needle twice. You can even go three times and you have a little tension there. Keeping that tension, I poke my needle back very close to where I came up, again maintaining that tension, and I'm just going to pull my thread right through. And I have a little bit of an eye or a little bit of a round little French knot there. What I like to do though is come up and give him a slight eyelid. So I come up just parallel to that eye, holding it down, and I just make a little line of a stitch of a thread. And then I'll come on the other side and make another stitch. This gives just a little bit of an eyelid. So now I'll do the same thing on this eye. I'll come up in the center, make my French knot, maintaining that tension on that thread, and then I'll stitch that little eyelid. And now I want to work on the goatee. So I'm going to bring my thread down here, and I'm going to stitch right across, and I'm just going to do a satin stitch for that shape. So I'll come back in and create stitches just parallel to each other, going down the length of that goatee that I want to make. And I want to make sure that they're tapered, so where I start the stitch and end the stitch is very important. Now I'm leaving a little bit of space between my stitches because I'm going to go back and fill them in. Right now I just want to get that shape started because I think that's very important for this goatee. And if I make a mistake and one's a little too short, I can always go back in and elongate it. When I have the length of the goatee that I want, I'll make my final stitch at the bottom. And now I'm just going to go back up the length of the goatee filling in those areas. Again, just take your time. And this will help even everything out. Just like that. So now I've got to decide what I want to do for a mouth. I'm going to knot off the back here of this thread so now for a mouth, I want to do just a little smile. So I'm going to come back in with my red thread and just stitch a little bit of a smile. I can do two lips or just one, and I'm just trying to really emphasize the friendly nature of this Zorro. So I'm just going to create a few little stitches. Again, I can use that split stitch where I have my loop and I come up in between the stitches, leaving my loop to the bottom of the page and continue this all the way across until I have a little smile created. And one more stitch. And so that's the beginning of that face. So I'll knot my thread, stitch these two pieces down, and then we'll make our little name tag. 
So now I finished stitching these little pieces down. You could add as much stitching as you want. You can go to town and stitch the entire background and you can always continue it later as well. But I just wanted to take my iron and iron out any of the marker that was left on the face. Now I'm gonna try and leave this line here. It's just a good guide for me. So I'm just gonna remove any of that marker on the face. To make my little name tag, I have another piece of fabric here and I just chose one that coordinated. Could use any of these fabrics. I'm gonna have my name tag be approximately this long, or at least that's where I'm gonna start with. So what I like to do, since I have the iron out, is just press that little tag straight down. That gives it a little more body and it helps me when I'm designing it. So what I like to do to help stabilize this fabric for the name tag is I'll cut out the tag and then I'll just cut out a little piece of fabric besides. And this fabric is, can use any scrap. I just want it to stay on the back of where I stitch the name. So I can use any fabric and I only want to stitch on one side of this folded piece so I can open it up again. But because I pressed it, I have a nice little seam. The next thing I want to do is name my piece. Now the trivia, Zorro, um, his alter ego was Don Diego. So I want to stitch his name as Don Diego. So I'm going to just write Don and then Diego with my marker. And so now I can take my black thread and stitch his name. I'm just going to take my piece and I'm just even going to hold my scrap fabric underneath it. If it sticks out, I'll just trim it later. I'm not even going to bother to pin it just to prevent myself from getting stuck. So I'll start here with the first name. So I completed stitching the name tag. I'll just take my hot iron and remove any of the marker that remains. Then I'll just go over it, since I have my iron out again, just to really press that crease. And now I'm ready to attach the name tag. So you can use any color thread. You can add additional thread if you want. I'm just going to trim this just slightly. And now I can decide where I want to put the name tag. I like to put it on the side of the book. Of course, depending on the orientation of your book, you can put it however or wherever you want, up top or on the bottom. But once I have it here, I'm just going to add a pin. And then I'm going to take some thread that matches that fabric. I'm going to go in from behind here. So I'm going to split this open and just come in behind. This will hide my knot, at least somewhat. And then I'll stitch down, making sure I go through both layers of fabric as well as the base. And then I'll just come around here and stitch to hold it in place. Again, you can use any type of stitch you want, just using a little straight stitch. Now you could emphasize this as well. You can add additional fabric and additional stitches to really create something intriguing and a design element in itself. I like the way that all the pages will eventually have the name tags. It kind of unites it. And you can always do a themed book if you want. You could do um, favorite characters or, or heroes or uh, masked men or anything like that. There are just lots of possibilities. So then I'll just create my last stitch. I'll knot it off here on the back. You can see the back of my piece with all my stitches. And then I have my stitched interesting face. You know, you don't have to do a superhero or a masked man. I wanted to show you some other versions with the book. So, in a few so here's the book that I created. Each of the pages are a little larger than four by six, but it's the same premise. I use that fabric and then I stitched down the side, which I'll show you in an upcoming video exactly how I made the book. Here I have the title and I just stitched Friendly Faces because it kind of emphasizes those name tags that I have. I have three buttons, but the buttons are just decorative. There's, they're not holding the book together. That's stitched separately. Now I did stitch through all the pages to hold the buttons down, but that's not its main source of adhesive. So on the first page, I have a character here 
named him Ronan. And then I took all the fabric and stitches from this page to cover up the back of my cover. And I love that fabric collage look. So for this page that we created in class today, I'm going to save a bunch of scraps and use that to decorate the page. So if you do create a page, save your scraps to use for the other side of that page. So my next character, my next interesting face was Amy, and I have a bunch of fabric here. Now I didn't use all the fabric, I incorporated additional fabric that kind of coordinates well. But here I have a little face and I made a little element of a necklace. You can see I have decorative stitches and additional fabric to emphasize that name tag. Now here I have Vera, she has green pattern face, pretty hair, and the beautiful flowers, so I emphasize that over here. And I emphasize just a cute little sweet French knot. For this page I used a lace background, even though I didn't use lace here, just thought it was appropriate with a very pretty lady. Here I have my last face, Envy, and she's wearing kind of a turban. I emphasize the colors and the interesting shapes over there. And then for my last page, just to finish it off, I just did some decorative stitching with some of the fabric scraps left over from all the pieces. So that's an interesting fabric book that I made. It's only a few pages, but you can make this as many pages as you like. So that's how I make my interesting face. I designed it so that I can put it in a book and I'll show you that in a future video, just the skeleton work and how do I put that together. But for today's video, I show how I made that interesting face based on the character of Zorro. Now you can make a face based on anything and you can make your book based on a theme if you wanted, a compendium of superheroes or masked men or anything that really strikes your fancy. I hope you enjoyed seeing my fabric book that I already made, The Friendly Faces. I hope this inspired you to create your own characters made out of fabric and stitching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.